there's only a few more weeks left of 2016 and lots of people like myself have been a bit disappointed with how it's turned out. I mean, the word of the year from the Oxford English Dictionary is post-truth, or as Stephen Colbert prefers to call it. Truthiness, noun, the belief in what you feel to be true rather than what the facts will support. Is that really an accurate assessment of how we are now? I perhaps have a slightly more optimistic view that we are still pre-post truth. It's just our lives increasingly are based around flawed statistics. Statistics isn't easy growing up. I was never that much of a fan of it. It didn't really excite me in the way that physics did. It wasn't until I was doing my degree and then later my PhD, I realized how important statistics actually is. And I do believe that you can never know enough statistics. The important thing to do when you're working with any sort of data is to make sure that your data is actually representative. We want a completely random sample of whatever it is we're studying. But our lives aren't like that. Your friends share common interests with you or they're in similar classes or geographically similar locations. All these factors are kind of why they're your friends. We do live in social bubbles and that is increasingly the case with social media and the internet. So we have to remember that what we see as being the truth might not be the representative thing. We place far too much emphasis on outliers, data points so far away from all of the rest of them, from what is essentially normal. I mean, not to place blame, but in the media we focus so much on celebrities, people who earn way more money than everybody else. The news focuses on some of the most extreme, horrific and um, emotionally exciting um, stories that are out there. And they don't give us a representative view of what it is like to be a person. It's not reality, it's warped. When any sort of statistics is presented to us, it's, it's usually just headline figures. How often do you see the actual method that was employed, or at least the number of data points involved? If they're ever included, they're in the small print, which nobody ever reads. I have never seen mainstream statistics with error bars on but they're incredibly important because they tell you what sort of results you might likely get if you were to do that experiment over again completely independently. And only once you know that can you reliably draw any sort of conclusion. Those are just my rambling thoughts about this whole truthiness thing. I don't know how to robustly prove it. I certainly don't know how to solve it. I'm not a social scientist. I'm not a philosopher. I am just a physicist. But there are at least some things that we should try and keep in mind. We need to hear all of the opinions. We need to make sure that we are hearing from everyone. We need to be wary of outliers. Do not mistake them for the norm. Forget your gut feeling where possible. And we need to hold the people that provide data accountable. We need to keep them honest in the way that scientists try to do with peer review. Maybe I'm being naive and optimistic, but even I can see the hypocrisy in this whole post-truth thing, because it seems to be based on a feeling. Post-truth is in itself post-truth. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There's probably some more fun physics-y things on my channel, so do check them out and you can like and subscribe as well. All right, till next time.